Hi, today we're going to talk about forces. So we have a couple goals. We'll just introduce forces, you know, what is it, a force? And we'll talk about three forces in particular, namely the force of gravity, the force of tension, and what we call the normal force. So let's just start just with the basics. What is a force? So a force we define as a push or a pull. Very simple definition. A force is a vector, so in addition to having a magnitude, it also has a direction associated with it. Forces come from interactions between objects. So if you're, if you're sitting on a chair, then there's an interaction between you and the chair. The chair is exerting a force on you, you exert a force on the chair. Note that inanimate objects can exert forces, like chairs, tables, walls, things like that. You push on those things, they push you back. Okay, so that's one thing we can say. We can make a stronger statement than that, though. And this is what's called Newton's third law. Forces always come in equal and opposite pairs. So, if you're sitting on a chair, then the force the chair exerts on you is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. That's what equal and opposite means. To the force you exert on the chair. Okay, you lean on a wall. The wall exerts a force on you, you exert a force back on the wall. There's really just one interaction between you and the wall, and there's a force on you that's the same size as the force on the wall. And there was two forces are in opposite directions. In our MKS unit, uh, our unit for force is the Newton, capital N because it's named after Isaac Newton, and one Newton in kilogram meters and seconds is one kilogram meter per second squared. So let's now go on to talk about the force of gravity. So one nice thing about the force of gravity is it's a good example of a force that exists between objects without them having to be in contact. So some forces require contact. You sit on the chair, that's when you get the force from the chair on you and you're exerting a force back on the chair. But there has to be contact between you and the chair for that force to exist. For the gravitational force, there doesn't need to be contact, which is good, right? Because the Earth is not in contact with the Sun, that's a good thing, and yet the Sun is still exerting a force on the Earth, which makes the Earth go in a roughly circular path. That's a good thing too. Okay, so here's our free body diagrams of the Sun and the Earth in that system. So, the Sun exerts a force on the Earth, that's the FG attached to the Earth in this picture. So a free body diagram shows all the forces that are exerted on an object by other things. And then the FG attached to the Sun is the force that the Earth exerts on the Sun. So note, those are equal and opposite forces. And the gravity is always an attractive force. So these forces always go back toward the object that's exerting the force. Okay, so that's one way to think about gravity in terms of, you know, the solar system. But let's get a little closer to home. And here we see a motion diagram for an object that we just dropped from rest from a certain height above the ground. And it starts at rest, but as it falls down, it gets faster and faster because the force of gravity is exerted on it and the successive images get further and further apart. Those images are left behind at equal time intervals and so uh, because it's going faster, the longer uh, the gravitational force has had a chance to act on it, the dots get further and further apart toward the ground. Okay, so at or near the Earth's surface, we can say the force of gravity, gravitational force, exerted on an object of mass little m by the Earth has a magnitude little m times g, and it's directed down toward the center of the Earth. g is what we call the value of the Earth's gravitational field at the surface. You might have called g the acceleration due to gravity. You'll probably hear, hear that a lot and give it units of meters per second squared. So you might have heard G is 9.8 meters per second squared directed down. 
This is equivalent, okay? 9.8 newtons per kilogram. It's exactly the same unit as the meter per second squared, and they're equivalent units. But I think it's a nice way to see it in this form, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. That means every kilogram of stuff you have when you're holding it near the surface of the Earth has 9.8 newtons of gravitational force acting on it. Okay, you get 5 kilograms of stuff, then you get 5 times 9.8 newtons of gravitational force on that thing applied by the Earth. There's our free body diagram for this ball as it falls down. So this is after we let it go and before it has hit the ground. The only thing acting on it is the force of gravity, mg. 9.8 newtons for every kilogram in that object. Okay, so that's good introduction to the force of gravity. Let's go on and talk about the force of tension. So tension is a force applied by a string or a rope, and usually we label this with an F subscript T, force of tension. In our ideal physics land, we assume that our ropes have no mass and they do not stretch. And one thing to remember is you cannot push with a rope. Tension force acting on an object always goes away from that object along the string or rope. Okay, so here's a good example. This is something like a tether ball. Okay, it's a ball on a string. Maybe it's being whirled in a horizontal circle. Okay, so if we draw the free body diagram of that object, we'll have two forces on it. One is the force of gravity, because this thing is at the surface of the Earth, so it's got a downward directed gravitational force, mg. And it's also tied to the string. And you note that the force of tension, the force that the string applies to the ball, goes away from the ball along the string. Okay, so those are two forces acting on that object. The tether ball, for instance, as it's whirling around in its circular path. Okay, let's talk about this third force, what we call the normal force. Now, the normal is not as opposed to abnormal. Okay, so normal is a physics word that means perpendicular. And you get a normal force when there's contact between objects. The normal force is one component of that contact force. It's the component that is perpendicular to the contact interface. Okay? If there's a component parallel to the interface, that's what we call friction. But the perpendicular component is the normal force, often symbolized by F with a subscript N. Okay, so let's take typical case of a box resting on a table or resting on a floor, and we'll draw the free body diagram of that. Okay, so it's at the surface of the Earth here, so there's an mg gravitational force directed down, and there's an upward normal force on the box applied by the table. And of course the box exerts an equal and opposite downward normal force on the table, but that would be on the table's free body diagram. Okay, so these two forces are in fact equal and opposite, but they are not a Newton's third law pair. Okay, so Newton's third law pair, one force is on one object, one force is on the other. Okay, so the Earth exerts a downward mg gravitational force on the box. The box exerts an upward mg gravitational force on the Earth. That would appear on the Earth's free body diagram. This upward normal force applied by the table on the box has a Newton's third law pair, the downward directed normal force acting on the table from the box, applied by the box, and that would be on the table's free body diagram. Okay, if we have a little cart on a ramp, then again we have these same two forces, mg and fn, but here we see that again mg is straight down, but the normal force is perpendicular to the contact interface, which is the ramp itself. Okay, so that's perpendicular to the slope. So in that second case, those two forces would not be equal, nor would they be opposite. Okay, so let's go on and think about the normal force a little bit more, and think about when an object lose con loses contact with another object, and that's when the normal force goes to zero. Let's try and make some sense out of that. So there's our situation of the box on the table. But we're going to apply, and there's our, our free body diagram, we're going to tie a string to the top of the box, we're going to start pulling upward on that string. Okay, so now we'll see a tension showing up in our free body diagram. And initially we just give a little upward pull on the string, so there's just a small tension force. 
But what this does is it actually changes the interaction between the box and the table. Okay, you can't change the interaction between the box and the earth, so mg is a fixed size. But it does change the interaction between the box and the table. Okay, so collect the box isn't going anywhere yet, so collectively the normal force and the tension have to balance out mg. So as you add tension, the normal force gets reduced. And you pull up harder on the string, the normal force goes down even more, pull up a little harder, normal force goes even further down. And finally, you're pulling up so hard that you're actually fully supporting the weight of the box yourself by hanging onto that string. The tension matches mg, and the normal force has gone away, and you pull just a smidgen more, and that box is going to come up off the table. Okay? So you want something to lose contact with something else, you have to get the normal force to go to zero. Okay, another way to think about the normal force is, it's the force that would be measured by a scale placed between the objects in contact. So in this case, we have the box in contact with the table. So we'll put a scale in between the box and the table. And the scale reads 15 newtons, so that's in fact the size of mg, the gravitational force acting on here is 15 newtons. And that's balanced by the normal force applied by the scale on the box. If we tied our string to this and we pulled upward with, say, a 3 newton upward force, then the normal force would go to 12, the scale reading would go to 12. It doesn't affect the force of gravity, the force of gravity is still 15, but the normal force and the scale reading would both be 12. If we pulled upward with 11 newtons of tension, then the scalar reading would be 4, because we need an extra 4 newtons of normal force with the 11 newtons of tension to balance out the 15 newtons of gravity for the box not to go anywhere. And if we wanted to actually lift the box off the scale, our upward force we apply would have to be just at least 15, but a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's a good introduction to force and a good introduction to these three specific types of force, gravitational force, uh, tension, and the normal force.